The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Your war room for insider news and draft analysis from deep within the confines of Cowboys headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Twenty-four, and we are 16 days away from the NFL draft in Detroit, Michigan. Welcome into the draft show presented by Miller Lite. Taste you can depend on. We've got a great show for you today. Chuck full of draft info with Aisha Morrison, Brian Broaddus, Nick Harris, Zach Wolchuk. I'm Kyle Yeomans. 16 days away. 30 visits are wrapped up. They are done. It is over with. Now it's basically sit on your board and start looking in the right direction, Nick. This is the... This is the information gathering over. This is now time to stack your board and really make a plan going into draft weekend. Of course you come to me to open because I just downed this entire thing of <laughs> apple juice right before the show. Yeah. And I'm over here. <laughs> um, yeah, man, it's it's almost time, dude. It's that time, time of year. You got apple juice. You gotta <laughs> gotta keep me going. This good Tropicana. Gotta keep it going. But uh, um, no, nah, man, it, it's this time next week. We're really gonna be. I, I think that the draft trade scenarios will really be starting to buzz. Um, you know what happens in the top five. What happens in the top ten. Who moves up to try and grab a quarterback in the yeah top 15 in general um man it's gonna be so much fun this time next week and then once we get into the draft it's it's non-stop for those three days it's it's the best time of the year brian brought us you know it absolutely is and uh now it's uh, you've got all the information in order to put your board together and so that's the most important thing you'll get the coaches involved here they've gone to some pro days they'll have reports filed so it's now up to Will and to Steven and to Jerry to kind of Mike McCarthy to sort out the information. You know, you got to make sure as a scout that you're not saying something that will influence the room in a way, in a negative way. Or, you know, it's you have to be very, very mindful. You have to fight for your players. You have to know when uh, to attack, when to back up. Uh, you're not going to win every battle in there as a scout. So you have to be mindful of that. And but you do have all the information. It's really super important because you do have a general manager that does not go on the road uh, all the time. He doesn't see all these players. So your presentation will be huge, Mike McCarthy, to Will, to those guys. And then what you're going to have is those cross-checkers, the over-the-top guys, the national scouts. Everybody's going to have to be on their, their on point to make sure that they put the tag in the right place, but they have all the right information. And the more th that you can compare these players to today, to players that maybe Jerry and Steven have seen in the past, really does them a lot of good. Yeah, this year this yeah. year specifically yeah. talking about where Jerry has been, Shrine Bowl, Senior right. Bowl, Combine. Right. Mike McCarthy, Alabama, Michigan, mm -hmm. Notre right. Dame. Exactly. He missed out on all the big uh, all-star yeah. events. Well, he was at East-West a little it, bit in Big it, 12 Pro Day. Not, not every general manager hits all yeah. the schools. I'm not saying that against the front office at all. But sure. I'm just what I'm saying is is a scouting group, which, you know, as media scouts, this is what we do. We look – and, but you try and present the player in a way that everybody in the room gets the absolute best picture of. And then when the film goes up, guys will make their own determination of where they have. And then how, you, uh, how do you put that tag within the round? Uh, there's going to be – they're going to look at all these wide receivers and they're going to have to sort that out. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be some of the most difficult – when you got deep positions – the corners, yeah, the the safety. the safe, you know, yeah. The, 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 you look at the the edges are another one too. They're, these tackles, those tackles are tough. These tackles are tough. So there is going to be guys that you work longer on, and there's going to be guys that that's who he is. Put the tag there in the fourth round. Next guy. Yeah. And so that's where we're at right now. But this is a very very important time, and the scouts have to take on that responsibility. Because, as we all know, this is a draft that has to, has to fill in a lot of areas that they, uh, that they lost this spring. 
no question. I, I think one of my favorite parts of this time is, yes, of course, you get the rumors, you get the trade buzz, but then you're also starting to hear about some of these names that are coming from Canada, from small schools. We talked a little bit about small schools, but this just shows you the scouts. If you're talented, they will find you. And when we've had some of these guys pop up with Giovanni Manu from uh, British Columbia, uh, that's been linked to several teams now that he's getting visits. We've talked about Stiggers from early in the process, and he's meeting with teams, you know, five different teams I think at least are, are, are scheduled to meet with him but I think that's something that I that I love like some of these guys that aren't from the big name programs that we've spent the last two months talking about now we can do deeper dives yeah. on some of these uh, unknown schools I mean I'm sure a lot of people don't even know about British Columbia it's humbling it's humbling you're, you're going through all your film and you're already starting to stack your board and somebody's yeah. like hey yeah. Have you watched this Wait, guy? Wait, what? Who? Who? Where? Like, I didn't even know this existed. Can I it... find tape on this player? Yeah, no, mm. but, but to your Turn point. Turn your phone it... off. Yeah. Man, those... <laughs> yeah. Kudos to the scouts. They are, they are always grinding. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just, I, I think it's humbling, and it's it's just funny. Just like you said, just when you get to this point, like, you think you're almost done, and it's like, yeah. hey. Just here kidding. Somebody yeah. else. Got a so. couple more here for you. <laughs> it is a fun time because now you start to see some of these other names. We've we've heard the first round, second round, third round prospects. These top 100 guys for months now. You've right. heard about these names all the way through. So that leads me to our topic of conversation here in segment number one. I want a pet cat update. I want somebody in the day three element of the draft. Rounds four through seven. Possibly undrafted, but I think if they're a pet cat, you think they're being selected. Um, Can I start so, this thing off? Yeah, you Absolutely. Go. You give, go. Me some, give me no, two names. Yes, fine. Bow, bow. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll two just, names that you like the best. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do one, and then I'll let somebody have their own, so maybe we could circle back around on that. But I'll yeah. give you the one guy that I really like here. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Dominique Hampton from the University of Washington as a safety. Mm -hmm. okay. 6'2", 215 pounds. He's a sixth-year player for the yes. Huskies. I watched him. Played 57 games for this guy in his career. It's the most all-time in Husky history. And there's some uh, there's some elements to his game that I really, really like. Mm -hmm. At 6'2", 215, he, this is an explosive, plays well with his eyes. He'll take some strange angles on you every once in a while, and the body control can be a little out of whack. But he's got extremely long arms. He, he, he can deal when he has to cover. He can deal with guys with those contested catches. He knocks balls down. Uh, there's, there's, he, he tends to play a little flat-footed at times, which causes some issues. But the communication, the pre-snap stuff with his guys, with his teammates, when he sees the field well, he's got really good instincts. Yes. You can count on him to play coverage well underneath, and you can count on him to knock somebody out yes. the way he plays. So. Dominique Hampton, 6'2", 215, safety from the University of Washington is a guy I'd like to consider there in the in the fourth round. Can I comment on him a little bit? Go for it. Um, yeah, I actually put in my notes, like, when you – I know you mentioned him playing flat-footed, but when you see him coming downhill, he's not afraid to come downhill and help in the run game. Yeah. And when he comes down, he's, he's tackling with some force. Right. Uh, I also said that he has a hunter-like demeanor. You can see – just kind of how he looks like he's stalking his prey when yeah. he's kind of looking at everything. I like this. Yeah. yeah, he has some chip. He has a lot of chippiness to his game, but he he ha he covers a lot of ground with his long strides because of he's rangy, he's lengthy. Yep. Um, yeah, I watched him the other day and I was I was like I was impressed with him. You know, like you said, some of the angles and stuff can improve, but the temperament of the player is important to me, and I think he can process at a high level. I appreciate that cross right there. Yeah, yeah well, another <laughs> safety. I'll throw another safety in there then, and, and you guys know I love Javon Bullard from Georgia. Mm -hmm. But his running mate, Tyke Smith, also mm. from Georgia. Now, he's a little bit short. Both of them are. I mean, Smith, 5'10", 202. But this dude led Georgia in tackles, tackles for loss, interceptions. He was a transfer from West Virginia. But you talk about so that. That's what made me think, like, okay, sounds a little bit like Smith. That's stalking your prey. He's really good downhill. I love watching him around the line of scrimmage. But he also will travel some, can line up, play the slot for you. I think he's got good range. I think he's really good covering underneath when it comes to drag routes. He stays on the hip pocket of the receiver uh he's able to kind of disrupt the routes with his physicality a little bit the, the weakness here would be obviously the the length the height could be a deterrent to some teams also 
hips at times can be a little stiff for me, right? When he's got a turn, run, flip, go cover, uh, I don't want him as a single high safety back deep. I don't think he's a true free, but I do love his ability to come up. He's really good at shedding blocks, being able to navigate around blocks. Uh, he's kind of like a linebacker playing in a safety's body. So Tyke Smith, if you need a safety day three, fourth, fifth round, I think he's a guy that the team's going to get some good value on, and he's a good special teamer. And you've got him as a senior bowl guy, too. Yeah, He played well throughout the week at the senior bowl and did some good things there, despite some of the length limitations. He was only a three-star coming out of school. Sure. He was only a three-star. Went and to West Virginia. Comes to Georgia. And then transferred. Yeah. He had the production at West Virginia that allowed him to go to Georgia and play in the SEC. But that's, a, that's the kind of guy that – is under the radar from a, a recruiting standpoint. Then you get to another level and you right. say, oh, gosh, he can actually play. He can actually do this thing. And then so, yeah, I, I whenever I looked at him, I didn't look at a ton. I only watched one game of him. But five or I, I put like a like a borderline fifth round pick. Yeah, it's kind of I got I a fifth round grade on him. Yeah. What do you think? So I've mentioned a lot of pet uh, day three pet cats over the course. So I'm going to try to give you a different one because I've mentioned the Jay Licks Hunts and the Isaiah Davis and the Isaac Garendos and all so on and so forth. Oh, I but I'll Garendo. give you a I love him, man. Watch He's out for uh, Mr. Hunt from uh, from Houston Christian. We're going to yeah. have him on building the board this week. Yeah, oh, it's going to be fun stuff. Oh, uh, I'm jelly. Also <laughs> mentioned uh, Hunter Norzad as well. Uh, yeah, times. Hunter Norzad, but, Matt Lee, center from Miami. Yeah, I think that's another guy you and I both like a lot. That's We're going to yeah. just start naming guys until like you. Run I, out I just of wanted names. to name the guys that I've already covered, and that's why I'm not mentioning them here in this segment i wanted to bring a different name to the table so i'm going to talk about tyrese knight from utep linebacker uh talk about a tackling machine this is i I think when you get a guy out in space who needs to make a one-on-one tackle this is a guy that can do it and he could do it at the nfl level in my opinion uh accounted for 140 tackles last season for the Mm -hmm. miners out in el paso uh he gets it done in pass covers too six pass deflections uh had a uh, had two interceptions during his time at at um at utep but he can rush the passer as an off-ball linebacker and i think it's really it's really interesting what he brings from a schematic standpoint because you can do so many things with him you can have him crash down and be able to cover the run attack the backfield or you can let him step back in coverage and be able to disrupt the middle of the field he does those things very well I think the one thing that he's probably going to have to overcome at the next level or or maybe not overcome but just get better at is uh, his instincts aren't always there in pass coverage Uh, sometimes he'll get kind of lost in zone and a guy will kind of come over the top of him a little bit and be able to kind of break off on a on a pass that happened uh, in in one of the games against UTEP last season I'm I'm forgetting which one that uh, I I noticed that in uh but regardless i think him as a run defender man it's really fun i think this is a guy that you could look at on uh on in the sixth round if, if the cowboys haven't found yeah. their linebacker mm-hmm. yet I, this is a guy that I, I i really stand on the table for um had a really productive uh, four years uh, at utep um nearly 100 tackles in 2022 and then had 101 in 2021 so we're looking at gosh over nearly 300 tackles over the course of the last three or well over 300 tackles over the course of the last three seasons Love it. really productive guy out there i play this guy on the weak side and let him run yeah, yeah. the yeah, one the absolutely. one the okay. one thing that he does he plays with a burst and there's closing quickness to his game when you watch him. And, you know, I think he had the second most reps at the combine at 21 hmm. for wow. the linebacker. So, yeah. you know, He's this powerful. yeah, high IQ guy. I, I love everything that Nick said about this guy. I mean, he, he is, he, he's got some juice to his game. But, like I say, put him on the weak side, let him go. He's going to get to that ball. And he was a part of the Indy uh, Independence Community College ball club. He's a junior college product that made the jump to UTEP. He was actually featured for a split second on the Last Chance U, by the way, uh, the Netflix series. Oh, that's for right. Yes. Yeah, that's whenever right. Indy was there. When you've always got to look at players that are really good players on bad teams. Mm-hmm. And he and, and he is he stands pl- out. He stands that out, team, he and does. that and that's you know that's one of those things. If he is playing hard when his team's down thirty some mm-hmm. points. Those are the kinds of guys you want. UTEP had some guys on that defense that were he pretty did. fun. Tyrese Knight was one of them, of course, yeah. like you said. But yeah. then, like, Praise Amawale was a, yeah. a, an edge rusher that I think comes out next year. Uh, a couple guys that are decent on that team. What else you got? Aisha, you got some pet cats in day three? Yeah, I got one. Uh, noticed him at the Shrine Bowl and just, well, first of all, he had that crazy return. Anthony Gold, uh, wide receiver out of Oregon State. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Was Speed for represent days. Represent for the the, sh- the short Shrine kings and queens out here. Yeah, um, He was fun in practice. Yeah, he was fun in practice. But um, the thing that stands out to me is just the ability to, to separate and just how clear the separation is when he's doing it. Like, obviously, the size is a concern to a lot of people, um, just with him being 5'8", like 175. But I do think he can be a contributor on an offense if you, if you want to um, move him in. 
in and have him do some things in the slot. Um, he plays with some toughness. Also, too, uh, you know, the return ability is through the roof as well. He can see it and go. Um, and with this, I do think there might be an emphasis on grabbing some guys who have some return ability in this draft because of the rule changes and that actually seeming like it may be a factor in this game to get these offenses some, some uh, shorter yards to operate. He'll do that for you. He'll cut the field in half really quick for you, even if he isn't contributing right away on the receiving side. He was so shifty in practice. He, he like you said, short, yeah. short, king. short but receivers. Speed. But man, he's fast, and yeah. he's got the returnability. Didn't he return the punt for a kick mm -hmm. uh, for a touchdown in, in the, the Shrine Bowl? Bowl? Yeah. So yeah, he's got some some different elements to it as well that I, I really do like. Uh, I'll throw a name out there. Isaiah Adams, offensive tackle from Illinois. You mentioned yeah. him last I mean, week. He's, he's, he's a cat. He's a did real I, cat for did you. Did I bring him up? I do like talk him, about him Talk Great about him. Great vision man. awareness. Loves to work to the second level. Wants to finish his blocks. And you can see it on, on film. An Illinois team that, that ran the football a lot last year. Uh, I talked about his, his testing never really lived up to the hype. Definitely a, a big project for an offensive lineman. He's a guard. He's yeah, a guard. Yeah, I was trying to say. Yeah, I don't really uh, love him at tackle because I don't want him out on an island. I said appears to be better at guard with the body of a tackle is kind of the way it was. Sure. His footwork isn't necessarily there, but I do like the way uh, he can pull. He can he can hit. He runs downhill. He's always looking for work. He was a two time All Big Ten honoree, and he was one of the best Canadian born players in college football. Is the way I put it out there. So I, 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 I forgot that I mentioned him last week. So I'll move on. But no, I yeah, do like on. Isaiah Adams a lot. No, yeah, I was just pointing player. out that that's. That he's he's really a cat of yours. That's all. He is a pet. Got no, good I power in his. I think no shaming. Let's here. say they don't take an interior offensive lineman in the first couple rounds. Dallas goes away from that. No mm. Jackson Powers Johnson. No Cooper BB. No Graham Barton. I know those are all the names that Zach Wolchuk loves so <laughs> mo so so much. You don't get any of <laughs> those guys. Language. And you get into the fifth round and you're looking for a guy up front. I think he'd be a great name. I'm with you on that. In there. Yeah, I like Isaiah Adams. A name that I've seen like go fourth round, and this dude needs to go day two. I don't understand this. Is Austin Booker, the edge from Kansas? What's yeah, going with on you. here? I, I think I, it's probably just the lack of experience. Yeah, that's what? that's probably the biggest thing. He's gonna have to grow at the next level. Yeah, but, but yeah, when you I, see I take him. a chance on him. In Absolutely, because like because yeah. in, in an edge class where I think there's a bunch of questions. Like for me, I mean, I, I was him watching edge him. six by the way. Yeah, I think <laughs> Austin Booker is a dude. I think and the lack of bulk hurts him. He he is skinny. That's, that's the problem with I think people are you know uh he he was he started his career at minnesota he did he transferred and so mm -hmm. yeah and uh you know there's there's times where you see him lower his head i know i watched the kansas state game where he lowered his head and just kind of carried the carry the tackle back and then he's kind of dipping guys and stuff like that i i think that the i think the lack of bulk is a problem for yeah him. long skinny build was the first thing yeah. in my yes. notes but he's got great burst well, and you do see him get fatigued at times i will say that's a little bit of a knock that i put in my notes and on and let me keep, keep this in mind too they worked him as a linebacker at the combine now mm. and when i say that these are the drills you don't see when they get finished with the actual workout Teams will request that players, some players, go and work in other positions. And Austin Booker, they worked him out as a linebacker. So teams might be looking at him more as a linebacker than an edge. Well, he's got great instincts in the run game. So I could see that. I mean, that dude, I, I think the eyes are, are something that's a strength for him. But How much I, you I had to give him some love. 240. So he could work as a linebacker. Yeah, yeah and he's big. I mean, you got like a 6'6 six, six, six frame on that guy. 6'5, 240 with a combine number. Yeah. Lanky. Yeah. Did anybody see uh, – anybody watch this uh, corner from Washington State? And he's got a funny first name, Chow Smith-Wade. Yeah, yeah, you were talking Chow to me about him yesterday. Is that you say Chow? Yeah, Chow Smith-Wade. He um, He's uh, doing a lot of work here in um, uh, Frisco, actually, uh, okay. during the draft process, working with uh, some of the corner trainers out here. But, uh, yeah, I had, a, I had a decent outing at the Senior Bowl whenever he was out there in Mobile. Um, wasn't the best week. He had gotten cooked pretty bad on a, a, a ball from Lad McConkey, mm -hmm. but then he, he bounced back the next day and had a couple of really good reps against Jamari Thrash and Roman Wilson. But um, I, I, I feel like he's a boomer bust type guy, but I want to see him at nickel. I think that's that's level. why I brought him up because yeah. this is where he's just he's not the biggest guy. He's five ten. He's one eighty four, and you know anything. The, the majority of his work is on the outside, and he doesn't have great testing numbers. But you watch him play. He's got these incredibly quick feet and it's hard to move him or turn him and I kind of feel like that maybe this is one of these guys out there in the west that we're just not really talking about very much because I think he could be a nickel for somebody yeah. just the way that he's a hard guy you can't run away from him he's got the quickness that this I mean the just 
the, the strength of his game, that's, that's what it is. And I could see somebody saying, okay, this, this guy is going to be a nickel only and probably have a pretty decent career doing it. What else you got, Aisha? You got another prospect? Um, we're talking about late day three. Late day three, or just day three in general? Yeah, um, I th there was a gentleman um, that I noticed at the Shrine Bowl, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, his name is Steel Chambers. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you're looking for a special teams ace, this is the guy. Linebacker, uh, linebacker Ohio State? Well, yeah, yeah, linebacker Ohio oh, State, rather. Yes. That stick is a bowl of oatmeal yeah, right there. Um, <laughs> why y'all say Why are you saying that? He is, that? though. Yeah, um, I he, think he, he's filled out. Yeah, um, and also too, I think he was at the Shrine Bowl, and, and we had the opportunity to meet him and kind of uh, talk to him a little bit. Um, you talk about the instincts and things like that. Him coming downhill, I I, I don't know like how much someone maybe is going to like him as just like a true linebacker to start. I do think he needs to develop some of his uh, his vision and his processing. However. If you want a special teams, what you call a special teams demon? Like, I mm -hmm. think if you're looking for an ace, if you're looking for, you know, to go ahead and sure up that spot, I wholeheartedly believe he will take that on the chin mm. and be that ace like a C.J. Goodwin for, you know, however many years you allow him to do that. Um, yeah, I like I said, I think he does have some upside in developing as a true linebacker. Some uh, The speed stands out, you know, just to have he's able to go sideline to sideline. But... I, the way he comes downhill, and he's also too, he's a hell of a personality, y'all. I don't know if y'all y'all know, but he is. He's like bandana on, shades on, like yeah, locker room. He's got some swag. Locker room favorite, uh, very well liked amongst his uh, his um, teammates and things like that. But I just, I'm starting to look at how who who are guys that can help you on special teams right away, and which is what a lot of teams are looking for if those guys are in the later rounds. And this is a guy that I think can do that right away. Okay, I'm scrolling through here, and I'm just looking at players, and I'm trying to find names. Like, I don't think we've talked about a ton. Mm -hmm. This is another guy. I think he's more of a third-round player. Now, the rest of the league actually don't draft him. Let him slide to day three, Please. and the Cowboys <laughs> can go ahead and snag him. But Jerry and Jones, the corner from Florida State. Yeah. Like, I, he's getting a lot of love. Yeah, because, yeah. Brian, he's... you talked about, like, slot corners. Yeah. He might be arguably in the conversation for the best for me. I Energizer Bunny type of players what I've got for this it. guy. I mean, he got the Bobby Bowden Leadership Award as mm -hmm. well, so you know he's a good character guy. Played his freshman year uh, at Mississippi State, then transferred to FSU in 2020. Has some wide receiver uh, ability in his background in high school, but anticipation, burst, downhill, tackles well in open space. Had three pick sixes as well at Florida State. So this is a dude, you get the ball in his hands, he is looking to make a house call, but he's all over the field. I mean, he had one game, he had a tackle for loss, forced fumble, fumble recovery, and an interception. First player in Florida State history to do that. There was a guy by the name of Deion Sanders that played at Florida State as well. They've got a pretty good, pretty damn good history of DBs. Jerry and Jones is the only seminal to do that. He is a player I would stand on the table for and be like, if he slips Day three, I don't think he will. He's probably going to go in the third round. Maybe some people want to go ahead and uh, snag him higher, but I would argue for Jerry and Jones is a big time player. It'd be a fun one. Yes. Anybody else before we move on to our second segment? We go to Twitter on the twenty. I've seen some love for Evan Anderson out of Florida Atlantic. Okay, um, yeah. and I, I I've given him more of a deeper watch. Man, if you want a wide body at one tech, this is a guy that I think you can go grab in the fifth or sixth round and have have some fun with. Six three, three hundred and fifty six pounds, uh, and man, South Florida through and through. Um, <laughs> This is gonna this is gonna trigger some people. Little uh -oh. slow on his get off, but uh -oh. um, I, I, I think uh, I think there is I think there is just some learning that he can do at the next level. Obviously, he's on a day one starter, uh, but I, I think he's a guy that can come in and, and you just use that size. I mean, that size is it's it's so useful at the next level, especially if you can just pair that with a little bit of athleticism. And I think Evan, Evan Anderson has that. Love it. Lots of day three prospects to sift through, and we'll continue to do so as we move on. But when we come back, we're going to go into some Twitter on the 20. We've got a ton of great questions from draft fans out there. When we return with more of the draft show right after this. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. I'm Darren Woodson, former Dallas Cowboy player and Super Bowl champion. When I played in the NFL at a high level, I relied on my vision to see the field. 
As I started getting older, I noticed my vision wasn't as good, and I was getting frustrated from wearing my glasses all day. I went to Laser Care Eye Center, and Dr. G talked about all the options. Thanks to technology and Laser Care Eye Center, I can see near, far, and between. Don't fumble your vision any longer. Visit them at dfweyes.com and tell them Darren sent you. They got me back on my game. In a stressful world, Lincoln provides balance and calm amidst the chaos by creating sanctuaries that move you through the world with ease. Our vehicles make your time richer and more uplifting with human-centric design, intelligent technology, and powerful performance. As the official luxury vehicle of the Dallas Cowboys, driving a Lincoln is just another way to show your team pride. Experience our full lineup of luxury vehicles, including the Corsair, Aviator, Navigator, and Nautilus at Lincoln.com. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or any time you want to munch. Mm. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Back here on the Draft Show presented by Miller Lite. Taste you can depend on. The segment is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. And it's time now to talk to the best fans in the land. Some NFL draft questions during some... Twitter, Twitter on the 20. 20. A little bit delayed on the firing there, but we're close. We're getting there. Almost almost draft time. We got this. All right. First question. This one comes from Ben, and I, I really like this because it's a different thought process. What is your favorite off-the-field fun fact about a certain prospect in this NFL draft? It could be anything off the field. We hear all about oh. the on-field traits and all of that thing, but what's the best fun fact of a guy – that you've learned about throughout this draft process to this point. This is an interesting one. Um, I, I'm going to start with Rasheen Ali out of Marshall. Uh, hmm. Golden Glove boxer as a kid. Golden oh, Gloves wow. boxer as okay. a kid. Use it in pass protection. You That's can kind of see it. Uh, yeah. He uh, he didn't start playing football until his senior year of high school. He was he was a boxer his That's entire awesome. his entire childhood. Um, so like into his teenage years. Into his teenage years. Yeah. Big big time right. boxer. So um, I found that pretty fascinating. That's a good one. Yeah. I don't know if that's my favorite. That was just the first one that popped to mind. <laughs> I feel like it is kind of a tough question. We're in, yeah. like, scout mode. Yeah. And yeah there's I, so much information in my I'm brain. I'm thinking. I'm... It is a tough one. We can move on if we need to. That's a good one to start off Man, with, Man, that, that is interesting, though. If you think of one throughout Twitter yeah, on the 20, I'm going through my that. notes to try and see, if, like, okay, what's a good yeah, thing I've got If you here? think of one at some point throughout the process. Can I throw out a second one? Go for it. Okay. Uh, Junior Colson, linebacker out of Michigan. Graham Barton uh, out of Duke. Yeah. High school teammates. Um, what? They, they, yeah, they both uh, are from Brentwood, Tennessee. Went to, um, uh, gosh, I'm blanking on the school right now. Raven, Raven something academy. Raven Claw. Yeah, yeah. It's not Raven Claw. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Raven Claw um, versus Raven Gryffindor Wood. in District 65. <laughs> Ten think, points for Raven Paul. I think it's Raven Wood, but uh, Junior Colson <laughs> grew up in Haiti. Uh, didn't move to the United States until he was uh, he was nine years old. His uh, parents both passed away as a kid and was adopted mm. by the Colsons out in Brentwood, Tennessee, and ended up uh, learning football and growing in, there in Brentwood. And then ran into Graham Barton, and they were high school teammates. And That's who knows? Awesome. Who knows? Maybe they end up on the same NFL team. Yeah. All right, like I said, if you have any more fun facts, those are two really good ones. Thanks, Nick, for carrying this segment. I really appreciate it. If we have one come up during the middle of Glad it, we have throw it out that, there. That's the high school recruiting background. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> throw it out there. All right, Phillip says, what are the chances that Tavondre Sweat drops in the draft? Would you take him in the third round if so? This is it's kind of a touchy subject with the, the DWI that, that Tavondre Sweat suffered or, or was uh, booked on this past weekend in – you hate to hear this scenario from a draft prospect at any point, but Dane Brugler pointed it out on Twitter that this was a concern for teams. This was a talking Absolutely. point for teams, Brian. Yep. What? How does it affect his draft stock, and how does it move? How do I think, teams move I think forward? There, here? I think there's some teams that clearly didn't have him, uh, didn't have him at a high level to begin with. I think there were some in, in because I, of those questions, just because of the the questions about his uh, his partying, his things like that. How much does he really cares is important to him and all that. Uh, so yeah, there were teams that you know, and teams dig in a lot more than we get to. You know, we just get to watch the tape. The tape is really good. He plays hard on Saturdays. We appreciate that. 
But there's teams that dig into personalities. They dig into interviews. They dig in. They ask other, uh, you know, other people in the uh, in the at the organization questions about the guy. And uh, I talked to four scouts the other day that thought that he could drop out into the fourth round. Mm. Wow. That, that there's some teams that have him off the board. That's mm-hmm. wild. And it's just not because of what happened the other day. It's just that they do not want to deal with somebody that big. And does he not care? And is it only going to get worse once he gets into an environment where it's, you know, where he has that opportunity to to be out and about and stuff like that? Again, that's that's not me. That's guys sure. around the league that you talk to that put these boards together. And so, uh, but this was, like I said, some of these thoughts were even before uh, what happened to him uh, this past weekend. Yeah, yeah the, the context that I had picked up before this happened this past weekend was more so work ethic issues. Yes. I, hadn't, I hadn't really mm-hmm. heard a ton about off-the-field problems as right. far as partying and things of that nature, even though from what Dane said, he was very upfront about that and, and yeah. the fact that he was he was doing those things in his underclassman years. But the, what I had heard was um, responsibility, being, being on yeah. time, being at the field, uh, maintaining a diet, and that didn't all really come together for him until this past season. So... Yeah. Um, he's going to have those questions to answer as well. I think as time goes on, and it just depends on how comfortable a team feels with bringing him in and being able to change his lifestyle up a little bit. Yeah, yeah he's definitely one of those guys that uh, we had heard the whispers of like, okay, he likes to hit up the frat parties every once in a while. I, I, it is going to be interesting. I mean, he might have been one of those guys before this happened where he starts dropping, and we're looking around like, what's going on? And it's because of that. Teams knew about this, yeah. and they had already wiped him off the board. I, I think that I've heard some uh, whispers about – his Texas teammate, maybe Adonai Mitchell as well, mm. could be one of those guys that uh, he's got some stuff that, that that's going on quietly behind the scenes. Not quite the same related, but another guy that you know teams might be a little bit scared to jump on him early. But I, I think absolutely, if he's there in the fourth round, the risk reward to me. The talents there, I, I I would jump on that player, and I do think that's probably the round. I, I initially I thought maybe the third. I'd even consider that as well, yeah. depending on who's on the board. But I don't think that that would scare me off necessarily about taking T Sweat. And the Cowboys have proven they've got a, a great support staff here to help players like that, and they will take risks when it comes to some of those. Well, unfortunately, Zach, we don't have a fourth round pick, so well you're, we're you're, trading not yet. back. But. Not yet, not yet, <laughs> not yet. So with that being said, John asked the question. And what's the highest 2025 draft pick that you would use to get another pick in this year's draft? How high would you go to make it happen mm. and to maybe secure a fourth round pick or maybe another couple selections at along this the way? Point, at this point, second round B has whooped this team's ass. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what it is about the second round where it's just – I mean, they've hit on the, unlucky. Uh, like unless a guy falls to them in the way like a Trayvon Diggs, which is like he was like, why the hell is this guy still here? Mm-hmm. It's the second round has really teed them up. So at this point, I've, if if because I, I don't understand, do you, what is y'all's theology on why the second round has been a difficult round for a while now? I think they've is had some really bad luck with with injury too. That's with fair. Medical. That's absolutely fair. I think fair that as they've well. taken some some chances on some players. It, they have a history here of doing this, and I was part of that history too, uh, where you get into a mode where it's like you see a player and you put him on the board for where you think his value is. Mm-hmm. Obviously, a Jalen Smith. They thought this is what Jalen Smith is as a player. They, they said they put him in the fifth in the first round, and all of a sudden they get in the second round, and now it's like we got to take this player, right? Mm-hmm. Or we have to. You know, or there's others. Bruce Carter, there Sean were guys, Lee. Sean, yeah, there were others mm-hmm. that that the value of the player was too much to not take. To, them. To not to take like Randy Gregory. Yeah. I would I would trade up. I would use a two to go if Waga uh, gets to you some in that that level. Maybe I'm being a little too ambitious here, but if somehow he falls, he's the one guy that I would trade up for. I think. Yeah. In this draft, other than that, I don't think I would trade up for anybody right now. Mm. I would let that thing f- fall to me and see how it happens. But if I could go out and get maybe the one of the one or two of the best offensive tackles in this draft. Now, maybe I see Fawaga different. I don't know how you guys see him, but I, I think he's gonna be a really, really, really good he's player. So yeah, and yeah, and to me, you know, maybe some teams think, oh, he can only play this way and you gotta play him at guard and you gotta do this. I I, I just watch the tape. It's just too good. Uh, so he would be the only guy that I think that I would consider 
uh, consider trading up for. Because I think if you look at the wide receiver depth and all that, you know, Neighbors, Harrison, Adunze, Thomas, all those guys, it's a deep draft at wide receiver. Sure I don't is. think I have to move up. But if I want to go get who I think the best offensive tackle is with him and Alt from Notre Dame, mm-hmm. that's where I'm going. On the flip side, let me ask you a, a scenario. 24, you have the option of trading back. For yeah. me, if Graham Barton is not on the board, I'm trading back. Is there any other player that you feel the same way about? Uh, Powers Johnson's that way for me. Powers Johnson, I respect. Yeah, that. and yeah. that's and I, you know, I was talking to some people around the league once again about this, and they all believe that Dallas is going to take one of these centers. Mm-hmm. That, that teams are planning on Dallas taking Barton or Powers Johnson. I think you might need to move up to go get Barton. I think Barton's going to be gone. I think yeah, Barton's I think so a guy too. that he – it's now kind of starting to even out where initially, you know, we, we talked a lot about Graham Barton, then here comes Powers Johnson with a kick a, a kick ass senior ball, right? And now we're starting to hear, okay, you got the injury knocks on Powers Johnson. Graham Barton, I mean, I think you just had Kuiper talking. He can go in the top 16 picks. Yeah. yeah. He's a guy, if you want him, you might have to go ahead and give up a two for next year and go up and go get him. You guys know I'd be in on that. I mean, I think he is one of the top – four offensive linemen period in this draft i love the dude so i'd be open-minded to that and i'm very open-minded to fawaga if he's still as well i saw a couple times he's sliding kind of that 20 range i think you're definitely thinking "Ooh, maybe we should go up and go ahead and take that talent uh we still uh, you said we could say the weird thing about a, a yes player fun facts yeah. Oh, Car- yeah carson still running back out of ucla had a pit alligator for a lot oh that's crazy how does that factor in his running style? What does this mean for his, what does this mean for LeBron's legacy? <laughs> what does it mean for LeBron? Please. And then uh, yeah, my homie Matt Owens said Kamani Vidal's related to Hank. who's Hank Aaron? Baseball player. Okay, oh, wait, wait, oh, no wait, way. wait, no. Oh. Yes. The number two home run hitter of all time. Hank well, Just don't, recently, don't do me like that. I don't know I think baseball. Yesterday I was his anniversary. Anniversary you're, you're, 715 you're, yesterday. You're Shout counting. out to Matt Owen. Thank awesome. you. You're counting Barry Bonds? A lot of people don't. I am counting Barry. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. We'll yeah. count Steroid he's era He's not in the Hall of baseball. Fame, but he's got the record. Okay. Yeah. It's true. He it's not, that, that's like, a controversial yeah, topic. You baseball, <laughs> you baseball Actually, people. I'm not going to say that. I think it's still impressive that he hit 770. I could not hit 780 home runs with or without steroids. See, I'm trying to find something weird. Weird, like we found out Jared Walsh of the Rangers has never had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in his life. I heard y'all say that. The like other that, day, is that is crazy to me. You know, we had uh, who, which lie. of these quarterbacks was it that's like never had steak? Wasn't it, it was the uh, Washington guy that just left? That they just Sam Howe, wasn't it? Yeah, Sam yeah, Howe. Yeah. He never, never, never had, had a steak, steak in yeah. his life. Mm-hmm. Those are kind of the ones for me. I'm like, I, I need to find some food ones here. If you have those, our our internet draft scouts that listen to the show and that are always on the show, mm-hmm. send them out. Let us know. Yeah. And also uh, send a bio information for Hank Aaron so that way we can give that to Aisha and is, make sure that she's caught is, up. Y'all leave me alone. Is there any, any besides Barton and Fuaga that you guys would trade up for? <laughs> to take so. draft capital to do so? Probably not. I don't believe so. I, you look at those two, you would have to do it for a position of need, and I think those are the only two guys that you could start seeing slip outside of the top 12 that – um, you can go out. You can go out and grab. I think guys like Joe Alt will be gone. Yeah. Um, gosh, uh, Olu Fashanu. I don't, I'm not mm-hmm. trading up for him. Um, no, me neither. So yeah, uh, only a skill player. I consider it for Fashanu. I love that guy. Uh, Matt asked the question. Give me your best day two fit to replace Michael Gallup at the X. Day two. Day, day two, two fit. We're talking two. second or third round guys here. For I mean, I'll tell you what. Here. I'll tell you what. Okay. The more I think about Malachi Corley in this offense, the more I start thinking it could be some fun, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got those thick thighs that you can line up out of the backfield to be able to hand the ball off three, four times a game, line him up inside, line him up outside, mm-hmm. uh, give him the ball in space. And he's not run. really a Michael Gallup replacement. Yeah, no, I, yeah. Okay, you're, you're, if, you're, if you're talking like a big body, is that what you're wanting here? A big I think body? that's what he's wanting. Okay, then let me. That was my Leggett number one. from South Carolina. Leggett. I think Javon that's, Baker that's also comes McMillan to McMillan yeah. from Washington. McMillan, McMillan I McMillan. I love. And McMillan, to me, I yes. don't think is just an axe. I think McMillan, you can play it all play three spots. Yeah, I, think, I mean, this guy is he is so smooth as a player, the mm-hmm. route runner. I mean, uh, he's got a little Rasheed Rice to his game, if you want to be honest, mm-hmm. the way he plays. So if you like that, if catch traffic. The contested catches. Concentration's I think he better good. Separation. He covers ground. I mean, yeah. And I mean, traffic, he's fast. Yeah, I love Jalen McMillan. Takes Jay contact Jay well. Takes an absolute stud. <laughs> Y'all crazy, man. <laughs> what about Cephas if you wanted to go late? Oh, yeah. That's a late Joshua yeah. Cephas, late UTSA, 6'3, 185. Just thinking body type. 
There's uh, a lot of off-the-field stuff there. A lot of off Yeah, the, the DWIs stuff there. in college. I mean, that's kind of a similar conversation, I guess, with yeah. Sweat. But that's why you could get him day three, not necessarily a second round, dude. Sure. I, I mean, I'm looking to try and wait on receiver as long as I can with how this stretches. Yeah. Um, I liked you. You mentioned Javon Baker just in passing. Yeah, Baker, but... Baker with, uh, I think, is a, like a guy Jackson, big-time comp. Have we talked about Devontae Walker from North Carolina before? Have not really, not much. I'm down? not as high on Walker as others Why are. Why is that? I, to me, I just don't. Quarterback I, play was a struggle. Yeah, well, I know you're, you're anti-Drake May. Uh, I, I just think it was more so the love Walker was getting as like a possible one-two type of guy. Like, could he possibly be in the first-round conversation? I don't see that. Yeah. I think he's more of a third-round type of player. If you're getting him in that range, then that's fine with me. But I just, when you're stacking him up against some of the other receivers in this class, like even a Pearsall from Florida or the guys that we, like Jalen McMillan, I would take a heartbeat over him. Jalen Polk wow. out of Washington. I think also might be a better prospect for me. I would take Polk over. Then, I think there's just receivers. It's not necessarily a, a Tez Walker knock. Yeah. It's there's players that I just like that I have ahead of him. I, I whenever you talk about speed and size, he doesn't have like overwhelming size. No. That's not what it is. And his length is not there. Yeah. But he has the speed to separate. He does. And he I can stack. And, and he has the big play effect to where he can run to open space. He he has good route ability. Limited route tree, but whenever he was utilized in a couple different areas, he would use the arm of Drake May to his advantage. I mean, he had I was looking at a stat the other day, average of thirty plus yards on his touchdown receptions. That's an average. Yeah. Not not one or two of over 30 yards. His average was 30 yards, which means big play threat down the down the field. And he's playing against the ACC. It's not yes. like he's playing against future accountants over on the opposite side of the, the line of scrimmage. He's playing against legitimate defensive backs, and he's torching them over the top. Long strider, another- tracks the ball well. Uh, I mean, he's a good job working back to the quarterback. Drake May's going to scramble, run exactly. around some. Yeah. So he did a good job in that area of it. But body control size, I can see that if you're looking for a Michael Gallup replacement. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and by replacement, are we? T- I think my mind went to equivalent. I, I think I want a little bit more, um, li- just a little bit more explosiveness, just a tad bit. I mean, I know that things change towards the end for mm-hmm. for Michael Gallup, but what did y'all think about Bub Means I from loved him. Pittsburgh? I um, loved him. I, I, when now you talk about the MG, I think about the ability to high point the ball, the concentration, stuff like that. Um, I I noticed that with Bub, it's not a whole bunch of wasted movement nope. in his stuff as well. Uh, he stacks pretty well. Again, not super bursty, but he has a suddenness to how he separates. Um, really can attack uh, attack the uh, the middle of the field and in the red zone. I put red zone as well. Here is that like yeah, um, and I think he uh, displays patience sitting in zones as well. Um, he has some foot quickness to him. If they did decide to go later and you're looking for a red zone threat, kind of a bigger body guy to to box out and um, high point the ball, he can do that as well. But means at a Pittsburgh. It's a good call. He's uh, He had the second most contested catches in the ACC, if you look at him. And then he had uh, he had five of his receiving touchdowns were 20-plus yards, if you want to talk about yeah. down the field. Deep threat. Yeah. Thank I mean, that, he will, uh, he is, he'll make some unreal circus catches, too. It's 6'1", 212. That's a good body right there. Yeah. I think you'll need some work on the route running part of it, but he's sure. got a natural feel for how to play this game. His yeah. his best football might be ahead of him. I agree. That's okay, why you I talk about with that. the player. Luke McCaffrey? I, yeah, I, I, was, I was waiting for Brian. I couldn't I mean, believe you Luke, didn't Luke mention McCaffrey, him. He can play, dog. We probably are just oh, – like, he, he can play. He's late. But, yeah, he's awesome. And you talk about contested catches. This yeah. dude's not dropping any balls. He's fearless over the middle. Yes, he's kind of just learning how to play receiver, but that means to me, yeah. Sky's the limit for him. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's a doubt that Luke McCaffrey's not going to be a, a stud baller whenever he gets into the NFL level. Is this a Bronny and LeBron situation where I, if you draft Bronny, you get LeBron? Can we draft Luke and then also automatically get Christian McCaffrey? I know too? CMC is probably recruiting. Can we make something San happen like that? To go ahead and take his brother. What I mean, yeah, guys, maybe. He's going to end up in the fourth. He's, I think he's going to You think so? Way. I think he's Absolutely. Yeah. I wouldn't surprise me. I, I, yeah. I'm not surprised by that. What do you, what do you guys have, uh, Ricky Pearsall? Third, second round. I'm he, he should probably him. be a second round player, yeah. to be yeah. honest with you. Why would you would you take a Ricky Pearsall? Yeah, I would absolutely. Take a Pearsall. Oh, yeah. As, a, as a Michael Gallup person, absolutely. talk about throwing it up and relying on a guy to come down with it. That's yeah. why. Gosh. That's what. I, that's what came to I, mind. I would take is, a Ricky Pearsall. Absolutely. That's what came to mind. Hand him the ball. Guy. I mean, there's so many. This guy's such a high IQ player. When mm. you watch him play, he's I gonna mean, be there. I mean, he <laughs> he he makes people miss in space. He does. I mean. 
the, the quarterback is just all over the place at Florida. And so Graham Mertz or something, I think the Wisconsin yeah, guy. Yeah, the Wisconsin guy. Yeah, yeah so he's so good. Uh, Pearsall is having to make, like, every catch is an adjusting catch. Exactly. Every catch. And so, to me, somebody's going to grab this guy, and when they do – I'm gonna just I'm gonna go off on like a five minute rant of how good of a pick that was for that team. It'll probably have, be Baltimore. I have yet. Yeah. To find. Kansas City's gonna end up with this guy. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. see I that. Throw up. I have yeah. yet to find a highlight play more impressive than that one hand grab one hand that catch. he had against That's the Charlotte. best catch oh, of the draft. Catch I, think I think it's the best it of the draft process for sure. Yeah. yeah, unreal. All right, let's take our second break. When we come back, we've got some quarterbacks to talk about, and we're not talking mm. about the top guys. We're not talking about. The, the best quarterback in this draft, Michael Penix Jr. We're talking about some of the other guys. I'm Wait, just we kidding. We can't talk it's, Penix? We can if we Come want on. to. If you want to. Get it, All right, it. we'll be back with more quarterback talk and more, more the draft show when we come back. Hi, Drew Pearson, former Dallas Cowboy and now Pro Football Hall of Famer here. If you're struggling with your vision and tired of those contacts and glasses, don't throw a Hail Mary. Go where I went. Laser Care Eye Center, the official LASIK partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Drew, thank you so much for trusting us with your vision correction procedure. At Laser Care Eye Center, we offer six different vision correction procedures to help patients see. Check them out at dfwis.com. Tell them Drew sent you. Hood, hood. In a stressful world, Lincoln provides balance and calm amidst the chaos by creating sanctuaries that move you through the world with ease. Our vehicles make your time richer and more uplifting with human-centric design, intelligent technology, and powerful performance. As the official luxury vehicle of the Dallas Cowboys, driving a Lincoln is just another way to show your team pride. Experience our full lineup of luxury vehicles, including the Corsair, Aviator, Navigator, and Nautilus at Lincoln.com. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With Blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or anytime you want to munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Back here on the Draft Show. Come out to the Star in Frisco for Dallas Cowboys Draft Weekend presented by Miller Lite. The party starts on Thursday, April 25th at 6.30 p.m. Enjoy live draft coverage, player appearances, live performances, and a whole lot more. Friday, come back for draft night out with alumni and DCC appearances at Miller Lighthouse. Then finish strong on Saturday with the Draft Day 5K presented by Baylor Scott and White Health. For more info, visit DallasCowboys.com slash draft. I want to remind you you can get your hard copies and your digital copies of the Dallas Cowboys Star Magazine Draft Guide. Of course, Nick Harris did a phenomenal job in it. Yeah, he's pointing to it right there. He's so proud. Yeah, very nice job. <laughs> uh, we had contributions from uh, really our entire team to get this done. Really cool stuff. Yeah, you've got uh, scouting reports from Nick. You've got Patrick Walker with a feature. Another feature from Jeff Sullivan. Nick Harris wrote a feature about uh, Quantes Stickers in there as well. Nice. So lots to look forward to. Get your draft guide now. DallasCowboys.com slash star. Back here. Final segment of the show. And we haven't talked a ton about quarterbacks. Tor quarterbacks have been kind of the under the radar and for good reason. Uh, Dallas has already spent their fourth round pick on a quarterback this year. Trey Lance uh, in that trade earlier in the campaign. So quarterback has really been off the market for this team. But since we're a draft show that talks more about the draft than they do specifically about the Cowboys, I want to talk about some of these other quarterbacks, mm -hmm. not the Caleb Williams, the Drake Mays, the Michael Penix, the Jaden Williams, or Jaden Daniels, and the J.J. McCarthy's of the world. Who are some of the guys that you have your eyes on, Aisha, looking at the quarterback position? Um, 
All right, so he's not going to mull over well with, with everybody because he's not that big. But uh, <laughs> uh, to, to Lu- I don't want to, Tallulia? Tallulia. Oh, Tawalia. to his brother? Yes. Um, Tonga 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 um Was just was impressed with just his comfort level at the Shrine Bowl and just how he was able to um, get in there and, and connect with some of these guys. And he, again, like you talk about the size, he's only like 5'11", if I'm not mistaken. He's not mm-hmm. not the biggest. But with, with, I think he does have a little bit of that gamer to him. And then you talk about also, too, the ability to escape, make plays on the run mm-hmm. and things like that. That's something that offenses do value. He also, he was trying he was trying to um, go back to school, if I'm not mistaken, but his eligibility mm-hmm. was up. So that also tells you, he also has played a considerable amount of football. Now, yeah. I think his 2021 season was his best season, his most steady season. Um, he's going to take some risk. He's going to make some mistakes. But I do think um, if you do need a, a good backup to come in, we talk about it last year guys are looking for teams are looking for guys who have some experience yeah. he has some experience um I, I i think that he could come in and if you need a player to do some things for you for a couple games you know hold you over he he got it and he has some pop in his game he's not a boring guy to watch he, he can make plays on the on the run with his legs um some of the accuracy and stuff can Im- improve but yeah he's i, I thought he you, why not yeah, the Shrine Bowl performance was very impressive with yes. him. I mean, he he definitely showcased his ability to make plays on the run uh, and, and create. I think I would probably lean uh, – I think my guy, like Aiden O'Connell last year I liked a lot. I think Michael Pratt probably That's my is, guy right is my guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like, and, and we both liked Aiden O'Connell last year too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it, it fits yeah. the mold, Brian, that we've talked about with – Four-year starter, three-year team captain, a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. Does he have elite arm strength? No, but the decision-making is good. I think he's got good touch. I mean, if you're looking for a guy that can come in and, at worst case, is a backup for you, Mm -hmm. that can be reliable, I think Michael Pratt definitely fits that. I said said productive and clean. Pratt's ability to get multiple weapons involved stands out. Game manager, uh, an impressive pocket presence that will put him on a 53-man roster as a rookie. And here's a little-known secret. You talked about the experience that he had and the amount of games that he played in and the amount of reps that he got, he's only 22 years old. That's incredible. Yeah. So he he still has some time left. He's actually out of my top 10 quarterbacks, it actually stretches to like top 15 or 16. He's the fourth youngest quarterback behind Caleb Williams, uh, Drake May, and J.J. McCarthy. And he's who got he, the size. Who he beat in the Cotton Bowl, by yes, the way. Yeah. Michael yes. Pratt, Tulane. And yeah. he led a furious comeback to do it. Pratt, a Pratt a is a Pratt to me is a I love him as a quarterback. I love his demeanor. I love the way he delivers the football. Tulane football has got so much better. Mm-hmm. Became I mean they were a loss away to SMU this year, right? To getting back into one of those mm-hmm. New Year Day bowl things again for the second straight year. A lot of it has to do with Michael Pratt. He is a he's an outstanding player, and when his name's called, he is of those guys. There's the Jordan Travises of yeah. Florida State. The one that's really intriguing to me, because at one time he was thought of as maybe a top 10 pick, is Sam Hartman at Notre Dame. Yeah. And I'm wondering what the hell happened yeah. there. And, you know, when you watch Wake Forest play with Hartman, they played in a really like a, a an offense that really wasn't very conducive to his style, very slow, read that kind of, and then pull the ball, throw it. But the downfield passing and all that, you watch him at Notre Dame. He he, you know, even though Notre Dame had a couple of really good offensive linemen, there's times where he's having to move around and do some things. I think Stan Hartman is one of those guys that nobody's talking about, but the talent is there, the athletic ability is there, the body type is there for what, you know, that he passes the eye test on all that stuff for me. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody takes him and then he turns into a quarterback that we see starts in, in NFL games, much like, and I, I'm gonna say a Jimmy Garoppolo, but a maybe a better version of that time. The pedigree with this guy is is really really strong. His end of his senior season wasn't that way for mm-hmm. what the type of the talent that he has from uh, Notre Dame with Jan Hartman. I said that he won't win you a game, but he won't lose you one either. Right? Yeah. 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 Very, very in the middle somewhere. I think. Yeah. Wake backup, Forest. But. Yeah. Wake Forest was. I mean, they've known for basketball and golf. They weren't known for football. And like he, he put Wake Forest on the map for some of the game. You know, we there's some players we've seen from Wake Forest, but 
This kid, I mean, I was I'm surprised it didn't go as well for him at Notre Dame. Yeah, I am I'm, too. I'm really surprised that it didn't go better. Well, the, the you mentioned top ten pig at one point. I mean, the guy this year is Rattler. That, whenever you yeah. said yes. that, I thought I you were about to go with Spencer Rattler. Rattler. I thought that because I mean, that's I think scouts are going to love this kid. I think he's probably going to go in the third round. Uh, but he's got because every, everyone's looking like, okay, can I find Mahomes like traits? Yeah. Rattler's got that right. The dude did not seem like a leader. He got rattled under pressure. Sure, the Oklahoma version that you mm-hmm. saw get benched. And I got to be at that game against Texas where Caleb Williams had his coming out party. Mm-hmm. That's not a kid that you want. But you see the involvement, uh, the, the way that he's matured at South Carolina. And his tape last year is pretty darn good. Yeah, I mean, when you're is. watching Xavier Leggett, there's some throws. Spencer Rattler's got all the talent in the world. I think it's more so the leadership, the intangibles that you want from a quarterback. Size. And, and, and some of the size. But I think he, you know, some of that's like he can put up a little bit of weight. But I think the intangibles somewhat have been a question for me. But also the decision making. Yeah. He will get himself in some trouble because he trusts his arm so much that he'll force some throws where it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't throw that, please. He's got a little bit of farve in his game. In that, in that what way. are you doing? I had put that uh, he needs situational development. Yes. But uh, somebody's going to take a flyer on him on day two. Yeah. I'm, I'm 100% confident in that. I, I, don't I think, think it's that would be shock me. Yeah. One of these teams that does not, it kind of misses out on that run of quarterbacks in the first round, is not able to make a trade happen to get, hop up in the top 15. They're going to go draft Rattler and let him compete. I, I'm almost certain of that. I think he could be a starter in this league. I don't know about rookie year, but I'm not going to put it past him. I, I think Rattler has really developed in his time at South Carolina. It's, it's wild to kind of look at his journey because he was an unquestioned number one overall pick mm-hmm. going into that season in Oklahoma. And then by the end of it, he was transferring out and a freshman was starting for the Sooners. Yeah. So uh, to see him back in this in this situation, I think it's uh, it kind of speaks to the adversity he's kind of overcome too. Can we talk to, to speaking of adversity there, Jordan Travis, Florida State. Yeah. What's, it's kind of a curious case of Jordan Travis. He was a top-notch uh, player who had undefeated ties to, to Florida State, and then his injury was the reason that they were held out of the college football. They playoff. were they were the best. When you start to talk about the best teams, I saw mm-hmm. just watching college football on television. Yes, Florida State every week was the best team in college football, no doubt. And that that game where he got hurt, I get North Alabama or mm-hmm. somebody, whoever he mm-hmm. got hurt in that game. Their season completely went sideways on them on that. And Jordan Travis, I mean, you're watching you're watching a running back. He hands the ball to a running back we love. He's throwing the ball to wide receivers we love. You know, they're winning games. And a lot of it is because of his ability to get these guys the ball. I know twice watching him play against LSU both years. I mean, it, it just stand in there and make throw after throw after throw on third down and and find ways to move the football and get this team in the end zone. You know, unfortunately, we talk about the 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 injury. You know, killed his season, killed his momentum. Kid's got a lot of ability. Could yeah. be this a year's lot. Hendon Hooker, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you draft him, you stash him, and he could be your future starter um, down the road. What's yeah. what's the details on the injury? Any, any updates? It, 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 uh, to me, he had, was coming back to the medical recheck, so they've got that done. Mm-hmm. But I think he was going to be ready for training camp. Is what I think that was the last thing I heard. The last thing I heard that they, he was bang bang. Yeah, he's going to be but ready. That's the thing that's is, great. does it hurt his draft stock enough? Or, Man, I don't know how you don't watch the tape and see this guy's a really good he's player. And he's then, a hell I mean, of a player. in the offense, I mean, you can't help it. He got offense. hurt. Yeah, yeah, we talk about the offense. We've talked about the pieces that they have over yeah. there at FSU. I mean. He was facilitating that. He was. Yeah, that's that's exactly. He was right. the point guard, and this team it, they went on to win games, but they won them in different ways. They won them with an elite defense and a stout running game. Right. Is how they continued to go thirteen and zero, and then was left out as an undefeated in the college football playoff. So my question to you is, without Jordan Travis, this team was still good enough to win. Does that hurt his draft process? Well, what was the guy's that, name? Wanamaker or whoever the backup yeah. quarterback? It, it, uh, Rota, Tate, Tate, Tate Rotomaker, Rotomaker, Rotomaker or whatever. Yeah. When he went into the game, they couldn't move 10 feet. No. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, watching him play, I'm like, this looks like a compl- – and I know he's not a veteran player. He was a young guy. He's a backup. Yeah. yeah. But this team was, was completely stymied in that game against Louisville. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I know they were dealing with a couple of quarterbacks and all that, but – this this guy he he got them to play at a really high level. The years I watched him play, like I say, twice against LSU, no chance against him both times. Yeah, and oh. he beat some pretty good teams, Clemson, yeah, LSU. That, yep, sure did. He's had he has the tape. He has the the ability to go up there. It, it'll be interesting to see when a team wants to take a chance on him because it was a gruesome leg injury. It was yep. not a pretty leg injury. 
So the medical checks will go a long way. You guys both mentioned Michael Pratt. What grade do you have on him? I was just curious. I've got him in the fourth. Fourth. fourth round? Third. Fourth. I've got a third on him. Yep. Yeah. Fourth. Fourth, yeah. fourth round. Um, early fourth. Early fourth. He's, Very he's early a fourth. really Cowards. good player. <laughs> Tater tots. <laughs> Last put Rattler in the third. I mean, I'd probably take Pratt over him, but I, that's I would just take, BB I would take Pratt over Rattler myself. I, would, easy, I don't think Nick Easy would. money there. I think it's just talent. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pratt. I really do. I'd be cool with either of those guys. If you had to uh, give me the option of one, I'm taking Rattler, but it's close. It's super close. Taking I like both of them. I'm taking Pratt. I'm ta- taking Pratt. I mean, again, I think the Spencer Rattler stuff, and, and I think players can get better. They can develop. They can. I'm talking about from a maturity standpoint. I'm talking about as a person, things that. like that. Um, but I think it's at that position. It's important to have a calm to you and all those things. So I still will be a little concerned about that. Michael I, Pratt plays with that. I think consistency is for me. I think Pratt has yeah. seen more consistency. I think, I, I I think there's some every games, level of talent. I think there's too. some games where Rattler he he looks like he's the second coming, and then the and then the next game it's like it's a 49 percent passer. You're yeah. gonna really hate me here. I'm I sorry. think Rattler's ceiling is higher. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, it is. Wait, if I didn't know any better, I would think you were talking about Drake May just now. But like, oh, <laughs> you talking about consistency. I, oh. <laughs> Huh. You know what? If the commanders are interested in Drake May, by all means, go for it. Because there's it games you watch him where you're like, oh, this dude can play. And then the next game, you're like, I, baby, uh, what's wrong with you? Is your stomach hurting? Yeah. You, some of you that. need something? Yeah. You need some Pedialyte? Preach. Gosh, preach, preach, preach. Last name I want to throw out there really quickly, Bo Nix. Yeah. Oh no, thank you. Where don't you look going? at me. Don't look at me. I, I just Please. You guys know I, I don't. I'm not into Bo Kyle Nicks. being messy. We haven't talked about Bo Nix. Oh, yeah. I will say this though. He at Auburn, he was undraftable. At, at at Oregon, he completely the the coaching there, the system, the players around him, yeah. the running back, the offensive line, he he did a really nice job. You can watch him play against Washington. He made some tough throws. He did, and so you have to give. But the player that came from Auburn, there's no way I would touch. He's just getting these Drew Brees comps. Yeah, that I, don't, I, mean, I, I, don't I don't know. know. It's because he's going to end up in Denver. It's, well, mm. and if he does, then hey, you're you're in a great place to exactly. succeed. The He's taller t- than Drew too. The toughness about him, the toughness, you like Sean? the toughness, and the and the ability to throw on the move, I think, is good for you him. Could do it. Yeah, you could read about what uh, Nick Harris says about Bo Nix and the DallasCowboys.com. Such nice thing. You wrote, the, you wrote was, about. I was going to say that was my my position. <laughs> One read quarterback. Bo. Blame, no wonder you blame said Nick for that. <laughs> what about Bo Nix? I said, wait, no. Don't worry, you've got it all on the draft guide. All right, we'll be back on Thursday. It'll be our two week out episode. Until the NFL draft. It's crazy, man. Getting close. Getting close. For Zach Wolchuk, for Nick Harris, for Brian Broaddus, for Aisha Morrison, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long from the draft show. We will see you on Thursday. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!